I've declared my love for my local fruit and vegetable market here, and my favorite thing there has got to be the pumpkins. This time of year, they are beautiful. By the way, hi, if we haven't met yet, my name's Katie, I live in Italy. Si, questo, Va bene. è perfetto. I was like, what if I got a whole pumpkin? Ooh. Tutta. Tutta, grazie. Come un bambino. Today is Sunday, I just got the pumpkin. This video is gonna publish on Friday. So between Monday and Friday, I need to cook this whole thing, this big, 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 big zuka. Okay, I just have to say, we made some amazing pumpkin pizza. So you will want to stick around to the end of the video to see that. So each section is approximately one kilogram. That is a thousand grams. So I can use that for measuring out. So I'm gonna roast these beautiful pumpkin seeds. First, it actually really helps to dry them out because you see how wet all this is. So first I'm going to pat them dry with a kitchen towel and then pop them in the oven for about five minutes just to dry them out. Take them back out, toss them with olive oil and some salt in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you just bake them for like 25 minutes at 350. Best snack. All right, I got everything. Game plan is to bake this whole. This is going to be my pumpkin puree to incorporate into baked goods for the most part. These I'm going to cut into cubes and cook for each recipe from its raw form. Let's get cooking. Buongiorno! This morning I'm thinking I'm going to make some homemade granola, incorporating these pumpkin seeds. It's gonna be good. All I'm gonna do is toss some oats with some maple syrup, some olive oil, a bit of cinnamon, and I'm adding a mix of nuts and seeds. Bake it for seven minutes, toss it, bake it for another seven minutes. There you go, and then I'm adding some raisins and cranberries after that. As soon as I finish breakfast, I'm gonna start on a pumpkin marmalade, or you kind of think of it like a pumpkin butter, right? Like you know apple butter. So it's gonna be a jam type thing, a conserve, and it's gonna use a bunch of pumpkin. That is so good. Oh, I'm gonna wanna eat this with everything. Mm. Okay, I think I know what I'm gonna make. And it involves a lot of cheese. So I got my cheese. That was hilarious when I asked for 500 grams of the Emmental. She looked at me like I was completely bonkers. So this is a twist on a Ruth Reichel recipe where she makes a whole small pumpkin with bread and cheese inside it a gratin of sorts. This is my adaptation, and no, I did not use all 500 grams of Emmental in this. Oh my gosh. That is like wintertime perfection. This is like warms your bones. I'm not gonna lie, I did not think that we would finish that entire thing tonight. <laughs> yeah, it was just, I mean, Bread, cheese, and delicious pumpkin. It was pretty hard to not just put it all away. Also, it was really cold here. Also, your it, hair is in my ear. Oh, weird. I don't know if we can actually eat the whole pumpkin this week. Like, tomorrow I want to make. Do you think you can cook a whole pumpkin? Do you think you can really do it? There's so much pumpkin. I know. All right, friends, here's the deal it's midday, and I haven't baked anything or cooked anything with pumpkin yet but i'm like okay i have to do something with pumpkin soon i'm gonna make a pumpkin cake the recipe looks super easy i found it from my girl benedetta uh her show is on food network here in italy so yeah that's gonna be quick and easy i've got a lot to do today that's not making pumpkin stuff keep trucking so this is a torta di zucca e nocciole pumpkin cake with hazelnuts. It only takes about 10 minutes to prepare and then you bake it for 45 minutes. You need 400 grams of pureed pumpkin. Combine that with 180 grams of sugar, two eggs, 
200 grams of hazelnuts and this calls for hazelnut pieces. So I just blitzed up some of the whole hazelnuts I had. 100 grams of flour, 100 grams of sunflower oil, or I used 100 grams of peanut oil, eight grams of dried active yeast, and about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Then you basically just mix everything together. Sprinkle some of the hazelnut crunchies on top, pop it in the oven at 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes. Wow. Oh my gosh, it's so moist. I know you love that word. I must have a real sweet tooth today because it's another baked good. Um, this time it is a pumpkin and chocolate swirl brownie. Very excited. So the way that I make this is to make two completely separate batters, a pumpkin batter and a chocolate batter. Then I kind of like dollop them in this baking dish and then take a knife to swirl through, creating this like marbling effect. It's pretty late, this has got to cool. So I think I'll actually cut into it tomorrow and then I can have a bite. Okay, that's my plan. See you tomorrow. Good morning, buon mercoledì. Let's see how these brownies are. Oh my gosh, yes. Let's do some inventory because it's Wednesday. Let's see how much pumpkin I have left. I don't have a very good feeling about this. Crap, I'm really worried. So I've still got these huge wedges and this is the pureed stuff I made. Like I have hardly made a dent in this. Oh my God. I don't know if I can complete this challenge. How did I get so behind? I made two pumpkin things yesterday. I don't think they were pumpkin-y enough. Well, I'm gonna kick off the day with obviously a pumpkin-y breakfast, pumpkin pancakes. I just wanna note something quickly that this is going to be the pan that I'm going to use. I've talked about this in other videos. I'm living in a rental apartment here in Italy working with the supplies I got. Thanks to all of my Patreon patrons, I am going to buy a new pan later today. This is gonna be the last time I use this pan with pumpkin pancakes. It's not a bad way. I'm loving pancake week. <laughs> or pump, pumpkin week. It's pancake week now. Next week is pancake week. <laughs> Everything you have to make is a pancake. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah, it's really good. I love a weekday pancake. Just went grocery shopping to get some other ingredients to pair with all of the pumpkin that I have. And I was like, okay, after those brownies and pump cakes, pump cakes, pumpkin pancakes, or pump cakes. Anyway, I was like, I want something a little lighter for lunch. So I'm going to make a little radicchio salad. It's gonna be very good. Ciao ragazzi. It is closing in on dinner time and I have to decide what to make for dinner. It's gonna be pumpkin-y. That much I know. Um, ideally it will be healthy and easy as well. What should I make? I'm thinking a soup, kind of just like a vegetable soup with pumpkin. Yeah, maybe put a little coconut milk in it, make it creamy. Yeah, let's do it. That was a big spoonful. This is great for a improv soup, pumpkin-y soup. What do you think? I mean, I'm like inhaling it. <laughs> very good. So I feel like I've uh, made some good progress today on the pumpkin front. 
I'm not gonna lie, I'm kind of tired. It's been a pumpkin-y day, hasn't it, Connor? It's pumpkin, pumpkin, pumpkin. <laughs> Successful pumpkin day. I'll see you tomorrow. I woke up with pumpkin on the mind. So, today's Thursday and I've got a game plan to use a bunch of the puree because that's what I've just got a buttload of. I'm gonna make gnocchi, pumpkin gnocchi. Potato gnocchi has become a go-to of mine. I am anticipating it being a little tricky because when making gnocchi, too much water is your enemy. <laughs> you don't want it to be too wet. So I'm going to bake my potato as opposed to boiling it. And I'm drying out some of the pumpkin puree by also putting it in the oven for a bit. Then the only other ingredients to add are flour, egg, and a little bit of nutmeg. For finishing off these gnocchi with my brand new pan wok situation, multi-purpose, multi-function use. Sage and butter. That's what's gonna dress these gnocchi and it's gonna be All right, let's eat. You just don't go wrong with gnocchi, you know? Que bueno. Did you see this guy? So now I have used up all of my pumpkin puree and ironically, like a complete 180 from yesterday at this time, I'm like, oh, I don't have any pie. I don't have much pumpkin left. Like, what am I gonna make tomorrow with just the one little choo -choo -choo? I'll figure it out. Oh my gosh, is it even possible? The last one. Oh. I started this dough yesterday because with a sourdough pizza dough, at least my recipe, which you all know if you have seen that video, I started the day before. So I made one batch, which makes two different pizzas. I made one batch normally. And there was a wee bit of pumpkin puree left after making the gnocchi. So I just took that handful and put it in another dough round. Uh, and I incorporate it while I'm doing my stretch and folds. So I have two batches, a normal dough and a kind of pumpkin-y dough. Let's go make pizza. <laughs> Bam. The dough I shaped and it is doing its final proofing before I give it the final shaping. You know, once you're confident with shaping a pizza, um, you can master the world and you're a pro at anything. Right, so this is the pumpkin dough, which has made it a wetter dough, which makes it a little bit trickier to work with. Toppings master Connor over here has been busy, busy, busy. I am going to shred some cheese while he explains the toppings game plan. Uh, I've got you shredding some scamorza because I think we're just gonna do one that's uh, like a tomato base with some pumpkin and then just like shed loads of scamorza cheese. Then I think I've got enough, basically I've got, this is the remaining pumpkin. So that'll be that pizza. And I think these two, I'm gonna throw in this, uh, you know, 90s or 80s mini food blender that we've just been using the heck out of here with some sage, some garlic, some pumpkin seeds, uh, and some Parmesan, and make like a, like a pesto. I hope it'll be like orange. I think I nailed it. That's really good. Yeah. For that one, uh, I've got all this great purple stuff. <laughs> uh, radicchio and red onion, which I think would be really great on the, on the orange pesto. We've got some gorgonzola from the, from the dairy to put on that. Um, and I've got um, all this eggplant that I absolutely soaked in olive oil and, uh, with a little garlic and just kind of like pre-roasted. You might be wondering, these pizzas have no cheese except for the one with scamorza. And that's because for the gorgonzola and mozzarella top cheeses, we're going to add those cheeses at the very end um, with just one minute left in the oven. Mm -hmm. 
and on the pumpkin pesto and eggplant one, we're adding an egg with two minutes remaining of baking time. This is our pizza eating corner. I am, yeah. <laughs> this is where we eat our pizza. Not because the light's amazing or anything. No. Dude, your pumpkin pesto is so good. And your dough's a winner as always. Mm-hmm. I liked pumpkin week. <laughs> Oh my God, and this is coming from someone who didn't used to like pumpkin. All right, so this is the pumpkin pizza dough. To pumpkin. To pumpkin. Mm -mm. This, this totally works, pumpkin on pumpkin, man. Pumpkin on pumpkin pizza. Now I have to edit this because you guys are about to feast your eyes on this. Good luck. Thank you. Yeah, so fun week. Hey, thanks for sticking around. Oh. By the way, you should definitely subscribe if you have not subscribed to my channel. I mean, yes, if you've watched this long into the video, you better be pressing that subscribe button, you know? Bye!